Hi there, and welcome back to this video series on Premiere Productions. I'm Carl Soule. In this video, I want to talk about some times where you might want to make duplicate clips. Um, one of the big benefits of working inside of productions has been the fact that it doesn't accidentally create duplicate clips by copying sequences from one project to another. You really have to work at it to create duplicates. And you may ask yourself, like, why would I ever want to make duplicate clips? Well, there are some cases where you might actually want to duplicate some media. And I want to showcase how you can go through and do that. First off, um, one way that you might have to duplicate clips sometimes is if you're dealing with things like high frame rate footage and particularly if you want to use high frame rate footage and synchronize audio to something that was shot at a high frame rate. Um, usually when the clips come into Premiere Pro, we will honor the playback frame rate that the camera specified. So you might be shooting at 120 frames per second. When that footage is brought into Premiere, it looks like silky smooth slow motion footage at 24 frames per second. Um, obviously you can't synchronize audio in those situations. So it's kind of a common practice to duplicate a clip and you can do that at any point in a media bin just by opening up the media bin. So in this case, I'll just open up uh, day one here. And if I needed to duplicate this clip, I can just right click on it and choose duplicate. Now, another situation that we see people wanting to duplicate clips on a large scale is when it's time to do any type of turnover based workflows. Maybe you're editing at 1920 by 1080 and the director said, hey, we've got that experimental footage from a drone that uh, is shooting in 4K or 6K or 8K. I want to see what it looks like at the native resolution. Well, you don't want to go into the dailies folder and start relinking those files to, you know, the 8K footage because that's going to impact your assistant editors, other editors that you're working with. Um, if you're trying to do turnovers for color where you want to unlink all the footage in a timeline and relink it to a new set of footage that's been uh, gone through a color grade, that's another situation where you probably don't want to mess with the original source footage uh, that's found in the uh, in the dailies folder. So I've got an example here where I've got my edit. Um, this is the edit that I've been working on here for the film. And I've created a separate project that's called Turnover and Conform. So this might be in a situation where I want to get all the clips that are in this sequence, um, but I want to make new bin items for these. So currently this Turnover and Conform project is completely empty. So probably the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to make a copy of my sequence. So I'm going to grab the, uh, the icon here for this sequence. I'm going to go up to the turnover and conform. Now, here's the key thing. I'm going to hold down the command key when I do this, and you'll see how that little plus gets added to my cursor there. I'm making a copy by doing this. I don't want to move the original sequence. Maybe that's still being worked on. And this is just like a, a mid process conform that I'm doing here uh, for maybe a screener that needs to be relinked to the 4K footage. So I'm going to hold down the command key, let go of my mouse, and this is going to make a copy of my sequence. And I'll go into my list view here so we can just see that this is a copy. And I might even give this a different name just so that there's no confusion about what this is. You know, I'm going to put at the, the head of this turnover one uh, to indicate that this is the first turnover. It's not uncommon to do this multiple times during a, uh, a feature film edit over the course of many months. I'm going to go ahead and open up this copy of my sequence here just so I have it. And again, I can see the name of it so that there's no confusion with the original edit that's over in that full edit aspect project. Another good practice, just go ahead and close that. You're not going to be working with it moving forward at all. In fact, we can probably close all projects, but the one that we want here. So I'll right click on the project that I want and I'll use this menu choice here, close all other projects so that we're just working in this turnover and conform project. Now, the key thing here is I want to make this sort of a self-contained project again. I need to get all the source clips that were scattered across multiple media projects within my production. I want copies of all those to live inside of this folder or in this project, and I want them to be linked to this copy of the sequence. 
so that when I right click on a clip and reveal in project right now, if I were to do that, it's going to open up whatever dailies project that that lived in. I don't want to do that. I want to be able to manipulate these clips. I want to be able to go in and unlink the media and relink the media without knocking anybody else's work offline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all in this sequence, command A in this case, go up to the edit menu, and I'm going to use this option here called generate source clips for media. So what this is going to do is it's going to create new bin items. It's going to create new clips in the bin for all of the media that I currently have selected. And so by doing this, what this is going to do is uh, give me the ability to then work with these clips um, where I can go through and I can take these clips, knock them offline if I need to. I can choose to relink the media to a different clip. I can also make this kind of a standalone project if I needed to hand this off to somebody working outside of my production. Maybe there's somebody that's cutting together some social aspects and they just need a copy of the edit so that they can start pulling things that are going to be approved for use in maybe social media posts or promotional material. So this is a nice way of sort of generating all of your media in a sequence in one quick and easy way um, so that you have access to it all and you can make this separate standalone project that's no longer associated across all your different media projects within the production. Hope you can see some value in that. I know there's a lot of different workflows I'm not talking about today um, that have the need to do this. But the great thing about it is it's easily available if you need it, but you never have to worry about like a bunch of duplicate clips showing up in your production that are unwanted. Uh, and that's a big benefit of working inside of productions. Thanks. Please like and subscribe to check out the rest of the videos that are in this series and future videos that I'll be doing uh, moving forward on my channel. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Talk to you soon.